everyone, this is Christina within the garden and I'm going to be pruning a couple trees I have today. One of them is a Delta Heat River Birch and we originally had planted three, there's one left. And then one of our uh, waking aspens needs to be pruned. Now the reason we're pruning them is they've grown to a height where they're tall enough for me to cut back the lower limbs. So when you're selecting which branches you want to keep permanent, you're going to remove any lower branches and keep any branches that are that are growing toward the sky or in the direction you'd like to grow. Now our trees are close to our neighbors, so we'll be tree we'll be trimming any tree limbs that are going in the direction of their yard that are probably going to get too long or overhang their walkways. Um, so we're gonna get started on that. Now you're only gonna need a couple tools. Uh, these are the normal hand pruners I use. I'll use these on smaller um, limbs, but we're gonna use loppers on larger limbs. And if that doesn't work, then we'll go to, um, I don't think we have any overly large branches today, but Joe has um, a chainsaw. So an electric chainsaw to get some of the larger branches off if needed. And then you've seen me use this before. I actually have two different kinds. This is a pruning sealer for rose bushes, um, trees and shrubs. They're the same here. Um, the, both of them I got on Amazon. This one does the same. It does say ornamentals, so this one has the added of that, but they work the same, so this is what it looks like. It's like kind of a black tar on a brush, and it's going to seal the wound where you've cut the tree limb, and it's going to prevent any moisture and disease getting into the rest of the tree. Some other tips before we get started, do not remove too many tree limbs in a, in a season. So this is a progression that you can make as a tree grows and you can prune it in the, in the shape and the direction you like the limbs to grow. Also, you're always going to want to trim outside of the tree's collar. So each branch goes into the tree and each branch meets the tree on the base of the tree or the trunk and around the trunk is a collar. So you're going to cut above the collar. The collar is the thick part of the base of the stem and never make your cut flush with the tree. It prevents the tree from having a large open wound. So let's go look at both of those trees and I'll show you the cuts I plan to make. So this is our quaking aspen and this is our river birch and that line is our neighbor's line. So I'm gonna take this, now that this has grown quite a bit, I'm gonna take this off. Even though this branch is healthy and it's actually growing in pretty good directions, this one turns back toward the tree quite a bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna take it off so that the height of the tree is still growing upward and anything that's gonna get too close to the shed like this, we're gonna take off either now or later just as a heads up and then this one look how established the trunk is now so all of these lower branches are going to come off so the limbs you're going to target first are the dead the damaged and the diseased so let me show you a good example of damaged okay see how this split so this is no longer getting nutrients. It doesn't have any green buds, but all the buds around it. This would be considered damaged. And because it got damaged, it's now dead. So let me get to clipping these away and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, when identifying the collar, do you see how this comes around and it's like attached here? We're gonna clip it out here. That way we don't get into the collar of the tree because then the wound will go from here all the way down so this bulging part we're going to come out about a half an inch and we're going to clip it now, i'm going to clip it a little bit more and then we're going to seal it but this is essentially what we're looking for so that the tree is a taller trunk and we don't have these lower branches which were from when this tree was originally a younger tree growing so it's pretty cool
is a perfect example this time around of a bulging collar and we cut it at an angle so water shouldn't do anything but run off and then we've sealed it. Now, if I want to, I can come in and anything that's growing back at the tree like this, we can clip it. These are ones you can get rid of. And do you see this one growing down? Let's see, this one is growing down and back into the tree. So we don't need that one. Same thing with this one, down and back into the tree. This one will crisscross. I'll take that one off. I think I'll leave this one alone for the rest of it. But I am saving all the tree limbs to build tiny little um, trellises in the new garden down by the shop. So I'm going to tackle this one next. Okay, so the last thing for us to do is seal all of these with our tree sealer we got from Amazon. And then you can start clipping out all of the spindly growth. We don't need it to spend a ton of time on that. And it's okay if it's putting on new growth to put out new limbs, but these inside ones, that one's tough. Let me see. These inside ones are just preventing the tree from having free moving air in the middle. So I'm gonna trim some more of these out. We're gonna seal these and approve that for being cut. Same thing with this one, no free leaves. But this one we do and we need some more space to be filled in over there. Okay, everybody, that is trimming our river birch, which is a Delta heat river birch and our quaking aspen. So again, just the one limb off the quaking aspen to bring the height of the tree up. And then I trimmed it in so that it's not touching the um, shed, the garden shed. And then we kind of shored up the whole bottom of the river birch so that it has so much more room around the bottom and we're focusing all of its growth upward. So I did plant those as three, I only have one left. I absolutely love it. it has the peeling paper bark and it's beautiful. Okay so. everyone, that is trimming a Delta Heat River Birch and a Quaking Aspen. It is really sunny today, so I might still go out there even though it's still 6 p.m. and get some work done while the boys are riding their dirt bikes. But remember the three Ds when trimming trees. So dead, damaged, disease, and then cutting above the collar and then sealing with some kind of tree sealant so that in no um, disease or moisture gets back into the tree. And you'll learn what works for you and doesn't work for you. Just remember that when you're trimming a tree, you're likely to not kill it. Just try to reduce the trimming in the first couple years. That Delta Heat River Birch and that Quaking Aspen have never been trimmed before. 
they are not nearly to the end of their life, they're still in their infancy. So we decided this year we would do some printing so that we can get it to stay within the growth check that we want to do, but also so that it doesn't grow into our neighbor's yard. So with that, this is Christina within the garden. If you like this channel, subscribe. Pretty much an amateur gardener, but I like sharing these um, little tips and tricks. So do remember, damaged, diseased, and dead. And thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one.